Callie called you. Now I'm putting pressure on people. That's right. Gary Hoover, <laughs> Gary Hoover. is here. Hi, Hi doing nice. great. Hi, Gary. Thanks Good for joining morning. us today. Good to see you. I just heard you're from Dallas. Yes, we are. I'm are from you? Austin. Oh. Nice. Yeah. It's very weird in Austin. So you really uh, we keep try. it weird. We you try. think that you're better than us, don't you? Uh, absolutely, but you're bigger than us. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're both very entrepreneurial. Yes. That is yes. Houston Indeed. and San Antonio and all the other. Indeed. Yep. I Wonderful. think people underestimate Texas in terms of its entrepreneurial nature. Everybody in Texas. Oh, well, yeah. that's true. Exactly. Right? Yes. Maybe well, they overestimate. Yeah, maybe, they, yeah, maybe they've going. learned. Uh, maybe they're underestimating what we're over Absolutely. selling. So they're kind of evening it out. They know exactly what's that's going right. on. <laughs> I lived in Dallas in the 70s when it was uh, oh, yeah? a much smaller place. When it was a much smaller place. Okay, hold, hold on just a second, guys. Oh, we've got a, uh, okay. we've got a, oh. a little popping noise on the cable, and we're going to get it sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Ben wrote Who invents wants, this stuff? That he wants to know okay. what the meaning of life is. Huh? Oh, well, That is his okay. main question. Okay. Dang it, Ben. For Gary. We Gary, what asked is the meaning of life? Lee. We needed to ask. <laughs> Lee had that answer. Moving to Texas. There you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's right. No, it's okay to live somewhere else. Is so, it, I've done it. I've tried we, it. New York, Chicago. Uh-oh. Is it, what is I it? Is that. it the headset itself or the connector? Okay. Well, you know, we're we're paying attention to figure out what's going on. All right. So. Uh, All right, but we're clear for can now, right? Can we keep right? going? Yep. All okay. right. Let's go. Let's do this so, thing. So you are the founder of Hoover's.com, or what became Hoover's.com. Uh, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You don't sell vacuum cleaners. No. Okay. No, it would have been nice, but I was <laughs> tied into that. My first venture was the first chain of book superstores. I've done four startups, and my first baby was called Bookstop and Bookstar, and it became, I guess, the fourth biggest bookstore chain, and Barnes & Noble bought it, and it nice. was their entry into the big bookstore business. So we wow. now nice. created the idea in Austin. That That's deserves awesome. a high five. High five. Dallas and Houston, San Antonio were our first markets. That's Very awesome. Cool. Yeah, so and then I did uh, a, a business information publishing company called The Reference Press, and uh, after I was no longer running it, they renamed it Hoover's, my name, and, um, and then I had a uh, travel venture that failed and uh, started start the first chain of for-profit museums in the country and raised half the money and hit the recession, couldn't raise the rest. But wow. anyway. And <laughs> Everybody <laughs> hit that. So. You know what? I've learned more from my failures than I ever did from my successes. For better or for worse, that's often true. Yes. I haven't yeah. had any failures, so. I know. That's right. We know. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're, but you're from Dallas. Yeah. Right. They, exactly. they don't know exactly. failure in Dallas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in your session, uh, the history and future of modern media makers. You yes. actually are talking, or going to be talking. Did you do this yesterday? Oh, you, yesterday. Yeah, 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 you yep. did yep. it already. Um, yes, right. You talked a little bit about the the history, the, the the past makers in this modern space. Yes. Kind of, kind of give us a well, recap. Well, you know, uh, one of the things I, I got interested in big business as a little kid. I grew up in a General Motors factory town, and. Uh, everybody worked at GM pretty much, and nobody could really tell me about GM and how it worked. I yeah. mean, they were talking about Civil War generals and how they thought and everything, but not about GM, and it's driving me nuts. And I started subscribing to Fortune magazine when I was 12 years old. Wow. So when the new Fortune 500 came out a couple weeks ago, it was the 50th year in a row that I've read it, and I live in a library with mm. 55,000 books. Wow. And yeah, yeah. So... Uh, and, I'm jealous. And no wonder you started a bookstore. Uh, you, right. Well, yeah, yeah, they're kind of chicken and egg, yeah. right? Uh, bought a lot of books at that bookstore. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and, um, but the thing is, um, business history, we don't study it. You know, even lawyers study precedents and doctors study Hippocratic Oath and all that. The average business person knows zero about where their industry came from and who the greats were that created it. And it's awful. It cost, I believe it cost our society probably hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. a year in stupid mistakes we make that somebody made them in 1890 or 1920. And, and we get in this thing of, oh, it's all brand new. And none of the old rules apply. It's, that's just BS. It's nonsense. I mean, it's the same. There's nothing that really matters in business that's new. I'll Technologies bet it, I'll are bet new. it costs us trillions of dollars. I think. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, it, I, don't, I don't think it's... I, like a good Texan, he raised the ante. He right, right. Right. Ante on me. Absolutely. <laughs> well, find me up. I'll, I'll meet you and raise you. That's right. <laughs> I, I mean, if you think about it, every 
because no one's studying what's happened in the past, everyone is making the set right now. Yes, absolutely. There are 500 companies making the exact same mistake that it was made 500 times before that, you know? Yeah. The Yahoo's and AOL's of the future That's are right, right here at this they, show. They are right as here. As well right as the Google's of the That's show. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. And which ones win? So, what I focused on, I've given a number of talks, there are videos on, online at the University of Texas uh, website. Um, uh, I gave talks, have in the past given talks on the history of the airline industry, the movie industry, the computer industry, the auto industry, and the retailing industry. So for this show, I worked up some new material, and it was really the story of the two men that I think are the most important in the history of American media. And one Drum fellow, roll. Uh, yeah, and one fellow's name was Henry Luce, L-U-C-E, and he uh, invented Time Magazine and in Fortune and in Life and in Sports Illustrated. Wow. And he was... I didn't realize one guy did was, all that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, with a big organization. <laughs> yeah. But it started out with just two guys, and I went around, uh, they were new, uh, here in New York, so I went around the last several days and took pictures of the buildings that they lived in. They were in like six offices in 18 months, something like that, and I showed that as part mm -hmm. of my slideshow uh, uh, yesterday yeah. and their whole story and the, like Fortune magazine was a work of art. Collectors still collect them for their covers and they had Margaret Burke White and some of the greatest photographers on earth and then she moved over to Life magazine which was the most successful magazine in American history yeah. and just went crazy. They couldn't find enough paper to print it on. Mm. So I tell the story of him and the rise of Time Life and then, uh, and he died in the late 60s, so, and then the story of Bill Paley, P-A-L-E-Y, and he created television, basically. And, and that's a short version, but he uh, built CBS, he bought it when he was like 27 years old. Um, it was a little struggling network, it was distant second NBC, and he built it up to become the largest um, uh, advertising medium on earth and dominated network television through the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s. And he, uh, you can give him credit for creating the situation comedy, the nightly mm -hmm. news, uh, Edward R. Murrow, Walter Cronkite, L Lucille Ball, I Love right. Lucy. Wow. And he was just a visionary. And you can actually go to, he, he, he died in like year, around 2000. But he left money. There's a Paley Center of Media here in New York where you can go and, and watch 150,000 different TV shows. They've wow. got all the old files and they've got them digitized. And they have um, viewing stations. So they're, they're just, they're two of the most amazing. I think they're both among the top 20 entrepreneurs in U.S. history. Wow. So and the average person hadn't heard of them, which is <laughs> awful, right? Yeah, that's terrible. I want to change that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if these two guys are the most important. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Then, and you're also saying that you know business really hasn't changed from then to now. The basics, and the basics, yes. practi the basic practices. What can we learn from those two guys? Yeah, like that you just tell us everything right we now. need to know. Absolutely, in like five well, minutes it's or just less, right? easy. You know, just add water, and you, and you'll be rich. You know, um, you know the things at the end of the talk. I show the conclusions, and um, w these, I saw three things in both of these guys. Once is that one is they were real thinkers, they were real students of the universe, and they were intensely curious. They drove the people around them nuts with all the questions they asked, and they were interested <laughs> in everything. Henry Luce said, look, the average American knows nothing about art and architecture, so Time Magazine every week is going to talk about art and mm. architecture. And, um, and so uh, they were intensely curious, one of three things. Next thing is they believe that above all else, content mattered, yeah. and that technology didn't. In, in the sense that usually their competitors were technologists in love with the gadgets. Right. And I love gadgets too. But if they don't serve, if they don't make the world a better place, they're useless. Yeah. And, sure. and it's really, it's about the art. It's about the beauty. It's about the poetry. Henry Luce hired poets to write t uh, uh, Fortune magazine because he said he couldn't turn, he tried, he couldn't turn accountants into business journalists. But he could turn poets into business journalists. Wow. And so, oh, real poets, ones that made yeah. their livings mainly as poets, you know? And um, so the beauty and the poetry is so important, and that gets left out. The one that maybe gets left out the most often, when I, I teach entrepreneurship, I was entrepreneur in residence at the University of Texas Business School a couple of years ago, and one thing, if I see something left out, it's a love of business, a love, action orientation, hard work, and, and, and you see those, but I find people that, well, I don't know about advertising, or that's not cool, or whatever. We would have nothing mm -hmm. without advertising. Yeah. Yeah. We would have no magazines, and Can you no imagine? newspapers, and no television, no. or you know. It's, and so I gave credit at the end. I showed you know Chevrolet and Coca-Cola and Ivory Soap. I said, look, yeah. these are the people that may allow these two 
gentlemen to do what they did that right. made the world a better place. And so, um, and, and both of them, despite the fact they were very, almost, Luce was almost intellectual, um, Paley was a world traveler and went all over the world, and they were both involved with the Museum of Modern Art and all that, but man, they both knew a P&L, and they both knew where every nickel came from, and they both totally understood, and they were both incredibly profitable companies. Mm -hmm. And it uh, took them a while, you know, they went through all the struggles and, you know, sharing the room and living on 10 bucks a week and all this, but, uh, so I, and they're, and they're inspiring. Yeah, it's not really definitely. that much different than what a lot of the content producers here are trying to do nowadays. They're exactly. always trying to start their own little time magazine. Yes. Yeah. You know, if, if, if it's their own blog or if it's, you know, whatever. I know right. for us, it took a long time to get the show established and we're mm -hmm. still, you know, growing and sure. we still want it to grow more. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we can't complain about where we're at at least. So um, mm -hmm. uh, no, that that's takes great. years, that's great. years. Absolutely. It does. Of sacrifice. No. And, and I'm assuming these guys did not give up. I mean, anything oh, they that did, persistence, they were just... Uh, at the end, I say they had persistence, they had passion, yeah. and they had ambition. Uh, uh, they, they, they both wanted to be big from the beginning. They weren't like, oh, we stumbled into this. Right. No, they both, uh, when they're in like their teens and 20s, wanted to change the world. They had a dream and they uh -huh. pursued it with yep. rigor. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, and those things are timeless and, it, and it's so inspiring and we, we forget about these people and we shouldn't, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and there is tremendous amount, there's several books written about each of them. So anybody really wants to go deep and really understand um, I mean, I, I could have gone on for like days, and I had like 45 <laughs> minutes, so it was like That's tough. really fast, yes. <laughs> What's but, the saying that you, uh, if we don't learn from history, then we... We're doomed to repeat it, that's right. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Nope. And, um, and, I, and I also believe many times the greatest ideas and the way you really have breakthrough ideas. I have 210 ideas for new businesses in my little tablet Can I here. See? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, no, no. Twenty five cents some. a piece. First one's twenty five cents. The next one's fifty cents. Oh, okay, okay. A dollar. Yeah. The last one's really expensive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 Plus ten percent ownership. Of course. Uh, well, of course. sure. The kicker, that, that equity with, kicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and warrants on your first six children. <laughs> right. Um, but um, uh, you know, I get a lot of my ideas from other industries. So yeah. I would urge. I was talking mm -hmm. about media yesterday, but if you really you study Thomas Watson that built IBM. You study Alfred P. Sloan that built General Motors. Bill Gates said, if you're only going to read one book about business, you should read Alfred Sloan's book, My Years with General Motors. It's the most important business book ever written. Yet 90% of all the MBAs in America get out of school and haven't read it. I never read it. And, yeah. and you, look, you read how this guy, he was distant number two to Ford. And he took him yeah. on and passed him up in seven years and then really became the greatest company in the world for about 20, 30 years until people, until they management of GM became more obsessed with quarterly profits than making great cars, and that was the beginning of the end, which took 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back now, we hope, but, um, but so you can learn from all now, these different so industries, yeah. Right. Yeah. you know, and um, the people built the first universities, and the people built the first, one of the things is we have a tendency to write and talk more about technological entrepreneurs like Edison and yeah. Henry Ford, who are absolutely fascinating, there's a lot less talk in the general press about cultural entrepreneurs. So, people, so like uh, David Sarnoff at RCA and NBC, he gave us color TV, he gave us the television mm -hmm. system and all that. He's usually much better known than Paley. But Paley, who gave us the situation comedy and the nightly news and the TV star and all that, his inventions will last much, much longer right. because they're cultural yeah. innovations. That's true. They don't... They don't no, not, they'll be around for a thousand right, years. Right. Generation. Situation exactly. comedy yeah, are exactly. great, 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 great grandkids are going to be laughing That's at true. stupid <laughs> situation yep. comedy. That's right. right. So, um, and we don't seem to realize that as a society and in the academic community. Uh, they spent a lot more time studying Edison and, and George Eastman, a Kodak guy. Yeah. I mean, these are amazing people that oh, you should course. study. Oh, definitely. But we need to kind of bring up the volume on the people that led the way in arts, uh, the entrepreneurs in music. If you study how the Woodstock concert came around, it's one of the greatest entrepreneurial ventures in American history. Yeah, it's amazing. Crazy yeah. story. Yeah. Two kids, one rich kid, one without. And the guy took his fortune. It was from Paula Denture. Cream. That's where the money uh -huh. came from. It's real hard to find Dentures. if you dig. Dentures uh -huh. pay for and the And they party. almost lost the fortune. And no, no, it's and so entrepreneurship is yeah, everywhere, and it definitely. should be. We should have it in government, and hospitals, and museums, and universities. And it's so I. 
Well, I don't know about like you that. guys, but I'm inspired. That's, oh, that's right. good. That's good. <laughs> Want to go start a company? That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Hey, one of those uh, ideas. Yeah, okay, okay. Give oh, me half those... half of your venture. Okay. And we'll go. I'll give you five got ideas. It. <laughs> Gary, I got to pick which five. Right. Where can people Gary, find you? Yeah. Where can everybody keep up with uh, you? The best way to look, uh, find me is at Hooversworld.com. Hooversworld.com. That's my blog. And when you go to the homepage, you'll see a button for my YouTube channel. And that's where I've been putting most of my energy. I have, I think, okay. 66 videos on there. Wow, that's range a Range from entrepreneurship tips to, like, time-lapse video that I shoot all over the world. Cool. And I'm big on Mexico, so there's a number of things. There's a Mexican wedding in there. Nice. And uh, so it's diverse, but most of it's entrepreneurship tips and book recommendations since I go through so many books. Well, very thank cool. you very well, thank much, you. Gary. We appreciate so nice it. I hope to you meet enjoy you. the you guys go oh, follow on HooversWorld.com. Absolutely. And we will catch up with you later all on. All right.